Anyone could be good at knots, it's just a matter of how you learn. So I'm gonna break down these knots in a visual way so that you can learn them easier and then retain that information. What's so special about these 10 knots in particular? Firstly, they can all be tied and untied with gloves on, whether that's work gloves, winter gloves, or big heavy mitts. And this is something you just don't really think about until your hands are frozen solid. Number two, they're not gonna cinch up so tight when you try to undo them. Some knots just get tighter with more pressure on them and then you just have to cut them loose and call it a loss. So all of these knots, no matter how much tension you put on them, they're easy to undo. And number three, I have incorporated quick release options on almost all of them, so you just pull that tag and they come completely loose. One of the most common problems is your rope coming up too short. You want to connect another rope to it, but you don't know which knot to tie. So first thing, determine if the ropes are the same or different thickness. If they're the same, we're going to tie the zeppelin bend. Take your two lines and just fold one over the other into the shape of a six and have a small rope on top, and with the other fold it into a nine and have the shorter end underneath. Now layer that six on top of the nine and feed those shorter ends through the middle, the nine through the front, and the six through the back. To tighten it, it's really easy. Just grab all the loose ends and pull away from each other and cinch it up. Now for ropes of different thicknesses, we're gonna tie what's known as a sheet bend. Start with your larger diameter rope and form a bite, which is just folding it back on itself. Thread your smaller diameter rope up through the bite, wrap it around the underside and tuck it underneath itself. You could tighten this one really easily, it's just by pulling in opposite directions. For a more secure bend, you could add additional wraps here and make it the double or even triple sheet bend. And if you've ever had grommets rip off a tarp like this, then this is the knot to use. So fold your tarp down and we're gonna create a bite out of it just as if it was the thicker version of your rope. And now we'll slide our thinner rope through, around, and underneath itself. And that's a good way to remember the sheet bend because it's used to tie sheets, or originally sails in sailing. And here you could use it for tarps. It creates a really good bind and you could wrap it around twice if you want to add more security. This time I'm wrapping over top, which actually adds a lot more security on tarps. Now that our ropes are connected and long enough, we can now attach it to that tree. And you're gonna learn three amazing options for this. Do you want a rock solid secure loop? Or maybe a fast and easy quick release knot? Or my personal favorite, an adjustable hitch so you could get your tension just right. Let's start with the secure loop. We're gonna tie the infamous Bolin knot. The Bolin is considered the king of knots. You might have heard of it before, but found it too confusing to tie. I'm gonna show you a really easy way to remember it. For the first step, we're going to visualize turning the keys to a car. Because we're facing a tree, we're going to do the motion of turning a car off. See this motion here? It's like the keys turning, which creates your loop. Now take your free end and go up through the loop, around the back side of that standing line, and back down through the loop. And to tighten, you just pull all the ends and you have your bowline. The knot should look like this with that definitive U-shaped wrap there. It's commonly used on tent rain flies or pretty much anywhere you need a secure attachment point. Now if you accidentally wrap around the wrong line, it could turn out like this. The knot itself looks the same, but it's wrapped around the loop end and not the tension end where it's supposed to be. And never fear though, if you've accidentally tied this, then you've actually tied the anti bolin knot which is just as strong and arguably even more secure than the actual bolin. Now it's great to learn knots in a single direction, but if you're anything like me, as soon as you turn around and face a different way, you're gonna get disoriented. For instance, tying around a backpack or a tent peg where the object's closer to us and then that tension line is farther away from us. So you can see based on where your loop or object is, then your knot is gonna be facing a different direction. So initially there was that tree in front of us, so we had to turn the car keys off. But now we have open space in front of us, so we can turn the car keys on. See that motion? We're gonna use it on our standing line to create our loop. Now the rest of the steps are the same, and there's actually a saying to help you remember this part. The rabbit comes up through its hole, runs around the tree, and goes back down through its hole. While the bowline is extremely secure and easy to undo, it's not a quick release knot. So if you want a fast, quick release, you're gonna tie the Evenk hitch, also known as the Siberian hitch. So wrapping around a tree, just get your free end and pull some slack and then twist a loop in it. You're gonna twist it one more time to create another loop, slide it under your working line, and then take a bite from your free end and just thread it through that loop. At this point, you just tighten it down and it'll start cinching up towards the tree. When you pull it tight, you're gonna see that knot just lock in place, and now you have a secure line 
and see this tag end right here all you have to do is pull it and the whole thing comes loose as the name sort of suggests this knot is one of the best to tie when you have big winter gloves on but it's generally just a great knot to tie in a pinch when you want a quick release now let's say you instead want to adjust the perfect tension on your line. One of my favorite and most used knots is called the taut line hitch. This is a type of friction hitch, meaning it's completely adjustable. You could push on the knot and slide it along your rope and that'll tighten your line, or you could slide it the other way and it'll loosen your line. And while there are so many uses for this knot, my favorites are when you need to adjust the tension just perfectly on multiple sides. So that could be cinching up tent or rainfly stakes setting up clotheslines, or one of the most common getting that perfect tension on your tarp ridgeline. It's also one of the simplest knots to tie and can be tied with any type of glove with ease. So to tie it, just wrap around your object. Now take your free end and cross it over that tension line. Do one wrap on the inside and now another wrap on the inside. Now just one wrap on the outside in the same direction. To tighten it, just pull that line away from you and you have your taut line hitch, which can freely slide along your line, but when you stop and apply tension, it'll hold fast, just like this. If you've tied it properly, these two lines here will be in opposite directions. If you've tied it the wrong way, you'll see two ends going in the same direction just like this. Now if your knot accidentally came out like this, never fear, the knot you've tied is called a Magnus hitch and it essentially does the same thing. Now there's a lot of variation in this hitch and you might know them by a few different names, but they all essentially achieve the exact same goal. My favorite variation is turning this one into a quick release. So do your first two wraps like normal on the inside and when it comes to the outside wrap, fold your rope into a bite like this and slide that bite through. Now just tighten everything up. It's called dressing the knot when you do this. And it's basically just making sure everything's in line. And now you have your hitch that could slide exactly the same up and down your rope, but it has the added bonus of simply pulling this tag end and the entire thing comes apart. This is a nice one to use for your tent and rainfly stakes. You have your bowline on top and then your taut line on the bottom to get perfect tension and with a quick release if you want. And if you don't necessarily have the very end of your rope, you could double it up as a bite, just like here, and wrap that bite around and create the exact same taut line, and it works pretty much exactly the same. So it's a really, really versatile knot. And while the taut line does tension your line really well, if you want even more tension and more leverage on that line, you might wanna go for the more popular trucker's hitch. And I've got a really cool variation to show you on that one. As the name suggests, it's commonly used to tie down loads on trucks or canoes on top of your vehicle. Just take the end of your rope and thread it through your anchor there. Now when you reach forward, you're just going to create an ignition on loop, just like this. And grab your anchor line, which is closer to you, and slide a bite through that loop, and now towards you, and it locks it in place. This is called a slip knot. Now take that free end and thread it through the loop, and then when you crank it towards you, that's going to provide a ton of pressure on whatever it is you're securing. This knot actually gives a mechanical advantage of about two to one, meaning if I pull 10 pounds of pressure, it's gonna translate to about 20 pounds of force. Now to secure it, we're just gonna pinch the line right here and use that same quick release knot. It's actually known as a halter hitch, and this is how you do it. Just pinch there, grab a bite from the free end, wrap it around the standing line, and back through that loop it created. And now your trucker's hitch should be pretty secure. You could add another wrap around there if you want, but just pull this end and the whole thing comes loose. It's a great quick release and if you pull on that standing line, then your slip knot will come loose too. And as promised, there's a variation that makes this knot even better. Performing the same steps, once you get to your slip knot, we're gonna pass that line through twice instead of just once. What this achieves is a friction on your line so that when you pull it tight and then let go, it's gonna hold in place. Whereas before, if you let go, the line would just loosen. Though it is fairly secure like this, it's really just a means of maintaining that tension. So to lock it into place, we do that same halter style hitch and you could do multiple to really lock it into place. And it still maintains the same quick release properties with the added step of just pulling that line forward to release the friction portion of the knot. So now that we know how to connect two different ropes and then also anchor around a tree, let's talk about what to do with that ridge line. There are two excellent ways to add an attachment point onto the middle of your rope, both of which are knots adapted from the climbing community. The first is called a prusik, and it's another type of friction hitch, meaning you could pull in either direction and friction binds it so it doesn't move. 
but then when there's no tension, you could freely slide it along your line to reposition it. To tie it, we get a small loop of cord, and with that connection knot slightly off-centered, we just pull through the middle of itself. Now you might recognize this pattern here, it's often called a girth hitch or a lark's foot. And so we just wrap it another time exactly the same, over and through. And just make sure those wraps are nice and clean. And then you wrap it one more time in the exact same way, and you have your prussic knot. It's such an easy knot to tie, it's three of the exact same wraps. You know you've done it right if you have three wraps on each side, your main loop is coming down through the center, and this horizontal line is stemming from the outside loops. And now we could pull it in either direction and it's not going to move, and then slide and adjust it anywhere on our line. To attach a tarp, you could either just slide the bite through that eyelet, and then grab a stick and place it through that bite, and it locks it in place like a toggle. The second option is threading it right through that eyelet completely and then tying our zeppelin bends to lock it in place. One of the places I love to use this knot is connecting my tarp to my ridgeline. See I have three prussics there and I could slide the entire tarp all the way down the ridgeline and can adjust each attachment point without having to tie a new knot every single time. It's incredibly useful and versatile and I'm sure you could think of tons more applications in your everyday life. Now speaking of versatility, this next knot is exceptional. Before we had what's known as the king of knots, which was the bowline, and now let me introduce what's known as the queen of knots, the alpine butterfly. Now the alpine butterfly is a knot that could be tied mid-line, and is commonly used as an attachment point, just like this. To tie it, it's very simple. Create a bite and just slide your hand through. Now we're just going to wrap it around your hand twice, which should create a total of three wraps with the ends extending in opposite directions. And just before I start, think of this as the under, over, under knot. Now see this middle loop? You're going to reach under and grab that middle loop and just pull it through, pull some slack, bring it over the two remaining loops and now back under them to the front. Under, over, under. We're going to grab that loop, then just grab the two back ends tight Pull them together first, and then we're going to pull them apart second, and it's going to lock that loop perfectly in place, creating the alpine butterfly. The beauty of this knot is no matter how hard you pull on either end, it's not going to bind up. Unlike more common loop knots like the noose or the slip knot, which if you pull the ends, it'll just cinch up. Another lesser known use in this knot is if you find a fray in your line, you can isolate it just like this. Just wrap it around so your fray is exactly on that middle wrap. The one we're going to pull underneath, up and over, and underneath again. Now when you tighten it all up, that frayed part of the rope doesn't receive any tension at all. So you could pull on that line and it's as if that fray wasn't even there. And my absolute favorite use for this knot is to secure and retrieve a rope when you cast it on a high branch without having to climb the tree. Normally if you'd want to tie a rope high up in a tree, you've got to climb the tree, tie to a branch, or slip a carabiner there and pull the rope all the way up. But that rope can easily get stuck up there and that leads you to climb in the tree just to get the carabiner off. With the alpine butterfly though, it could be retrieved just like this. Cast your line up and over the tree like normal, thread your line through the butterfly, then just keep pulling and that butterfly will slowly raise until it's tight to the tree at the top. Now you could pull on that line and it's completely secured to the branch. When you're ready to take it down, you pull on the line that has your butterfly attached and the whole thing comes down. So by now we know how to connect, anchor, tension, and attach loops mid-line. But what about when it comes to securing down objects? For raising the end of a tarp, especially when there's no standing tree around, you could use a pole that's connected by rope to an anchor point on the ground. But if it's just wrapped normally, it's going to come loose in the wind. So here we're going to use the constrictor hitch. To tie it, it's going to be very similar to a knot you might know as the clove hitch. Your first wrap is around your object and you'll cross it over your main line and wrap it around again. Now you're going to go over your standing line and under this X shape that you see here. So thread it through the top there, and now when you pull in opposite directions, this is going to constrict around your object and make it impossibly snug. This knot's going to allow both ends of that line to stay firm, so your object won't come loose. It has a number of applications, whether that's for bushcraft, field repairs, or binding multiple objects together. This is a very strong binding knot, and it's totally different than the other ones I've mentioned earlier, because this one is not easy to undo. And one of the strongest binding knots you could tie is called a Canadian Jam Knot. I swear I'm not just saying that because I'm Canadian. It's honestly one of the best. This knot's specialty is cinching down and can be used to tie down bedrolls or tarps, 
create a humane noose for snaring when in survival situations, and takes the place of lashings when practicing bushcraft, utilizing very little rope. It's very easy to tie, and like all the knots shown here, can be tied with huge gloves on. It's essentially just two overhand knots. To tie it, we'll do our first overhand knot, create a loop, and thread the tag end through that, and right above it on that loose end, another overhand knot. Take your other line and thread it through that first knot, and now we're just going to cinch it down. The jam knot gets its name because the second knot we tied is going to slowly get pulled in and jam up against the first knot, allowing you to cinch it extremely tight without that knot coming loose when you let go. And while you could release tension by manually pulling it apart, the biggest downside of this knot is it's nearly impossible to actually untie once it's really been cinched on. So I prefer a modified, quick-release version. To tie it, instead of the overhand knot, we're going to form a figure eight. When you create your loop and wrap around, instead of going up through the loop, you'll go down through the loop. That forms the figure eight. Now at the tag end, we're going to form a bite, and with a small free end, tuck that just a little bit through that loop, not all the way. And with our other line, we're just going to thread it through that figure eight, and then to tighten it all together, you just pull on both of these extended lines. Now we have our jam knot with a tag sticking out, and it works in the exact same way. So crank down on it to cinch it all up, and because we have this tag end, we just pull on it, and the entire thing releases. But it's the little things like this, just like adding this quick release, that's gonna up your camping game and make your camping life so much easier. And this is only scratching the surface of camping tips. To continue on this knowledge journey, you need to check out this video here. And if you like this style and want to see simple and quick instructions on any of the knots you've seen here or any more knots, check the link in the description below. This is DJ with the Bear Essentials and your camping tips. Thank you.